Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the stream, and welcome to another video. Welcome to another video series. I know guys, it's been a couple of three weeks um, since I've done a video, uh, but I'm back. So here we are, and what are we doing? We're going to be working on this guy here. Oh, right up there. Yeah, this guy. That is going to be a new build today, so let's get into it. So we have our 427 SC Cobra, this guy right here. Obviously I've opened the box already, but I have not uh, put up all the bags. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through all the parts, have a look at it. Now this is by a company that I have never built a model for, never used any of their kits, so this is all new to me. Obviously. There's already some videos on YouTube about how this kit goes together and all that stuff. I've watched it. I have got an idea of how this kit goes. So, obviously we have our instructions here. Pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to this car. Um, pretty simple. Not too bad. I do have an idea of what I want to do with it though. I want to customize it. I've always thought it would be really cool to have an old AC Cobra and have a blown engine in it with nice big fat tires in the back. So what have I done? I kind of have this guy in mind. Maybe a nice blown Boss 429 engine. That would be pretty cool. I think if I could make this guy fit in there that would be sweet. And uh, yeah, and then of course, I've got a pair of big old fat slicks. Um, that would be cool if I can get these to fit too. But we're going to have to see once, once the uh, kit starts coming together to see how big the normal engine is that's in it. It is a 427, so it's going to be a big block. Anyway, we'll see how it goes, right? So we have our sticker sheet. We've got stripes on there. Who the heck puts decals on for stripes? Nobody does. I used to when I was a teenager. I don't anymore. I paint that stuff. Anyway, so bag number one. Oh, look, just like Tamiya, we've got staples holding the bags together. These are our clear parts. We've got headlights and we've got windshield and those two little side windows. These ones, they look like Oh, these are the, uh, the visors and a couple of little marker lights. We'll just put that over there with the stickers so that they don't get too harassed. We have a black sheet. That's another thing this kit does. We've got pieces molded in white and black. Um, what I am going to get done today, though, is we're going to get this stuff primered. I'm going to primer this stuff. So this bag, obviously we have our bucket for the interior, and this looks like a firewall, I'm not sure what this is. I really don't know, that almost looks like the bottom of an oil pan right there, but I'm not sure. We've got big fat disc brakes, why do they mold these so thick, that's like a good centimeter and a half thick, like it's this thick. Anyway, A-arms, a bunch of suspension stuff. Ooh, fire extinguisher. That looks like maybe the rear axle. If I want to put these guys on the rear axle, that's going to have to be custom cut. Looks like a radiator. Uh, Anti-sway bar, and I don't know what that is. There's our dashboard. Anyway, put that over here. Let me get that primed for us. We have our hood piece and our trunk and the hood scoop, of course. Steeple out of there. We got our twin cooling fans for the radiator. Look at the, the the fan motors on there is pretty big. Anyway, the the hole in the hood obviously gonna allow for this guy to stick through. So if I'm gonna you do use this guy, I'm gonna have to custom cut that hole, and which would also mean the scoop ain't gonna work either. I might be able to 
widen up that scoop just a little bit or if this does sit low enough I don't know the depth of the car compared to the height of the motor so that's going to be another factor how high is this baby going to stick out of the hood right so all these little things got to be taken into consideration if I'm actually going to use that Boss 429 engine anyway so prime that also oh we have our metallic gray parts for the engine so speaking of the engine this is our 429 engine and some suspension pieces so both sides of the engine block and the transmission this looks like the oil pan exhaust manifolds and our fan belts and I'm gonna guess that's a starter I don't know maybe that's a drive shaft it looks like we've got a two-piece intake manifold or we have two options of intakes I'm gonna put these here because I think the first thing to put together of course is the engine that's typical for a car model kit you always got to do the engine first right so I'll just put these up here for now and we'll move on and we have chrome piece and I have my music just a hair, a hair too loud okay this is chrome this is just the around the, the windshield surround it looks a little big I think I've seen one YouTube channel where a guy's building this kit and he felt that this was too this was out of scale and uh, not accurate and so he trimmed it down. I don't remember what he did with it. Um, see, my camera's not quite right here. Let's try this. Um, I can't remember if he trimmed it down or if he made his own or, or what he did, but he didn't use the kit part. Um, so we will see. We've got more chrome parts here. Let's open up this bag. And so we've got what looks like more exhaust pieces. Yeah, definitely. The, this is for the uh, the side pipes come out of the, that. That looks like our roll bar pieces. Rings for the headlights. Oh, we got our wiper blades. That's always a, a cool detail you don't see in every kit, but it's kind of a feature on these Cobras. Next, this looks like air filter and if we're using this style or we've got the dual and then I don't know what these pieces are this looks like valve covers maybe and then these I don't know we will find out in time we will find out okay More chrome, more chrome. Of course, we have our four rims or four wheels. Um, of course, if I'm going to be using the big fat slicks, then I won't be using these. Although these are very wide, very deep set. These are very wide rims. It's almost as wide as what's on here. I probably could pull that out and insert that into there and make it look a little bit more yeah we'll see we'll see another black sprue here this looks like our main frame yeah our main chassis one piece frame that's kind of nice it makes it nice and simple to get everything lined up um, inner fender wells in here these bars plates and the back yeah um, license plate and then I'm guessing these four pins are for the four wheels I don't know we'll find out one more 
screw in its own bag. Almost looks like a bulkhead. Maybe the firewall. Possibly the firewall. Yeah, it looks like maybe that's the curvature of the front glass and then we've got something there. Could be the dashboard piece. I don't know. Could be. And then this looks like it's the the one side view mirror on the car. It's possible. We have our four tires and what looks like four poly caps. And obviously these tires, these tires are much, they are rubber. Do, 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 squeeze, squish, squish. Tread pattern looks pretty good on them. It's not bad. Is there any detail? There is zero detail on the side of the tires. But that's all right. No big deal. Uh, where my rims go? They definitely, they almost don't look wide enough to go. Let's just see here. Don't need these ones. Those are my... Just out of curiosity. I'm just curious to see how this fits. Well, it does fit, and it looks all right. It's nothing too fancy, too special. And that goes to show you the illusion of the rim looking like it's a really wide rim. And then once you put the tire on, you see it's not really that wide at all. It's just average, right? Doesn't really do it justice, really. Anyway. That's that. It goes back in here. We have one more piece, one more bag, and that's the main body. This one's not. There's no staple on this one, so just a simple one-piece body. I do see a bit of a, a parting line right through here, and here, and along there in the mold. So a little bit of sanding and then a primer on that's going to fix that. Everything else looks pretty good, nice and smooth. No complaint really. There's no flashing or anything like that to have to trim or clean up. So that's good. Yeah, no complaints there. Tires can go in there. Yeah, we got some poly caps here that are in the bag with the tires. Yeah. So, that's it. Like I said, there's not a lot to the kit, and that's kind of typical for most car kits, right? So, I do want to sand this just a little bit. So, I want to get some nice fine, look at a sanding sponge here. You get 8,000 grit, my god hand sanding. I'll change the camera, which probably should have done a while ago. And um, yeah, I just want to get this maybe eight thousands too too much to start with. Uh, let's try. I think I got a six thousand. There we go. Let's try six. That feels a bit better. Actually, doing a little bit of biting in there pretty much eliminates that right away without really scratching into it. Just do a little bit. I am going to prime this. I'm going to put some 1500 Mr. Surfacer Black on this and we will see how how it hides this that seam, hides my sanding marks. That pretty much did it, just that little bit. Got rid of that ugly seam. it 
so just right now, now you can really see it. And well, maybe you can't because of the it's, uh, my light is kind of washing it out. But I have a blemish. I think what it actually is is not a blemish, but it's markings in the mold to mount the those two little pins that go right there, right behind the hood. Anyway, the mold seam is completely gone now, except right here. I need to tackle that in this spot. That looks pretty good. How about under here? Can I see it here? Yes, I can, right there. get underneath here you can it actually is like a, a parting line there we go and that is now eliminated all right and I'm happy with that <laughs> looks like we have our intercooler already molded in right here I know these cars. Oh, I've got quite the. I've got a mold line right here and here. I want to get rid of that too. So I am just going to take my glasses off so I can get in here and fix this. See, as I sand it, now you can see the line there that I created. So. I don't want to go too abrasive on it, so I'll just have to have some patience and do it like this. See, a good sign of it that it's going away is when all the, your dust line disappears. When I get to that point. You're good to go. I can still see it in the glare. Can I feel with my fingers too? Can I still feel it? I've actually got quite the line going all the way across here too. I don't think that's supposed to be. It goes on the whole body of the car. There's a parting line. So if I go like this, maybe you guys can see. You can see it. It goes all the way along the body. You can see that line on there now? See right along there. Right along there is a parting line. I've got it on both sides. Okay, so I've got a lot of sanding to do on that before we really, really take care of that. This one is kind of big. I could probably actually do this. process by scraping scraping that line tone it down I was not expecting to have to do this on the body. 
Maybe it depends on the mold you get, the version that you get. Maybe you don't have it. I definitely do. It's even all the way down here. It's very distinct around the headlight here and right there. This is where I might want to switch to 4000. A little bit more aggressive. So it's more aggressive so you don't have to press so hard. going to do the work a little faster. You get that done a little bit better for you. Once I get it to a point where I think it's pretty good, then I'll primer this thing. And we'll see how it looks. Anyway, I don't really want to spend the whole time with you guys um, sanding this. That's basically it, okay? So. As you can see, I've got a lot of work to do on the body. I'm going to put this aside for now because I want to get to actually doing some assembly today. That being, of course, the engine. Let's open up our book and look at instruction number one. Okay. After all, my channel is about assembling these model kits and what you're going to run into and what you have to do. It's not about necessarily about how to do all these things. Uh, of course I do try and teach you guys some of the stuff that I do um, because I like to show you guys that you don't always have to be professional to get a pretty decent looking result. That's my thing, right? And as I suspected, we are going to start with the engine as step numbers one, two, three, and four, uh, assembling the engine. So I'm going to assemble it to a point, and then I'm going to have to paint, right? In the meantime, I want to throw some primer on this stuff. Now, I'm going to, I am going to be primering the body in black. I'm going to want to use this 1500 surfacer. And then, because my choice of color, I think... I'm going to do very similar uh, color to the, the Trans Am model I did, the 1980 Trans Am, um, where I want to get that uh, kind of a clear blue. I know this thing's molded in blue, you know, it's a very common color is the blue. Um, I don't know, I might go with the blue, I might not, but I'm going to start with the black primer first so that I can do, if I do decide doing the blue, then I'm going to go with, I need to do black primer or a black base and then I'm going to hit it with the silver make it a nice shiny silver and then the clear the clear blue over top of it to give it a nice nice uh, nice shine but I need some green primer so I want to do gray primer on the other parts okay. this can's almost empty but I should be able to at least get something done here and then of course you guys will benefit from it because You'll be able to see these parts <laughs> now that they're gray and not black. And yeah, this can has just about had it. As I shake the can about, see now the frame is all it's all gray, it's not black anymore. And that's gonna be it for this can. I gotta turn on my fan because that's a lot of aerosol spraying at once. Fortunately, I do have another can of grape. So, do this little, I think the bulkhead dashboard type thing. I don't know exactly what it is. But, we'll see. We will see as the build comes together. And 
then we have this sprue, basically everything. Everything's primer, you get primer, you get primer, you get primer. Everybody gets primer. Now some of you might be wondering, why are you primering everything? Why are you painting it all? It was already black. You didn't have to do anything. It was already done for you. Technically yes and technically no. See, a lot of times what happens is you need to you need to paint it a slightly different color anyway and the color it's molded in doesn't match and so you wind up having to paint the whole thing whether you like it or not and that happens all the time So now here's our, our sprue, it's all now gray, primer gray. So that's all, every piece is now ready for paint. So in, as I assemble it and I take it all off of there, I don't have to worry about priming each piece separate because it's all been primered, it's all ready for paint. I'm just gonna put this here because as I assemble this engine, um, I'm gonna primer the whole thing as, a, as one unit, okay? So let's go back to our overhead cam and let's put our engine together, okay? So obviously two halves of the engine block plus the cylinder heads and the oil pan. Okay. Let's get these off of here. cylinder heads. They're off of another sprue. That's this one. Alright. So it looks like I do have a little bit of flashing. I don't know if this is flashing. See they don't show this flat part in the picture. So that tells me this is actually have, that that has to be removed. Even though it does feel pretty thick, like it's almost meant to be on there, but I guess not. Not according to the picture, anyway. save that just in case just in case it's kind of strange how it's molded like that but not in the picture obviously this is the engine mount but how this works the actual engine, I don't know. How it mounts in the chassis, again, I don't know. I might wind up cutting these off if I'm going to use this engine, because I could technically, you know, maybe put this oil pan on, on this engine. It definitely is the right length, and the width is good. The width is good at the base. I could doink right on top of there. Or I could use a, a 500 cubic inch dragster engine, go even bigger with a dragster motor. Again, the length would work. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? Put, have a uh, tall fuel engine in your, in your AC Cobra.
That would be pretty insane. I don't want to go overboard with it though. I don't want to go unrealistic. It's realistic that you could put a Boss 429 engine in your AC Cobra. You know, your kit car kind of thing. That at least is something plausible that somebody could do, right? two halves. Okay, let's get some glue. They do seem to go together. They line up pretty good without any real distinct spaces. It's kind of a weird, completely square transmission that's kind of weird. You don't see that very often. very, very unusual to see something like that. Okay. Cylinder heads. They just, there is no left or right. You just put them on. There is, like, really no detail on these cylinder heads. Which is kind of a shame. Yeah, there's no detail at all. They're just little block rectangles. with the sump towards the front. Kind of snaps on just like that, okay. There we go. Okay. Intake manifold. Now, we have two different distinct intake manifolds here. This one looks like it's meant for Weber carburetors. Well, this one looks like it's meant for dual fours. There is absolutely no carburetors that go onto this thing at all. Now, I know Weber carburetors were a very popular thing, but I do not believe the kit is given me any Weber carburetors at all. So, I'm not putting them on. And we've got the funky little bracket here that's going to go on before our fan belts. That's this. It's actually the funky bracket, as I just described it, is actually the water pump. It looks like the water pump and the lower rad hose all in one. That's what it looks like. Now I did go on the internet and I did take, um, well, well, I didn't take, but I grabbed a bunch of pictures off of the internet. Well, this is supposed to go over the top one like that. And sits like that. Okay. And 
our intake. Let's make sure our nubs are clean. Distributor goes towards the front because it's a Ford. Ford likes distributor caps in the front. GM, of course, loves them in the back. Dodge likes them wherever they can put them. At least it seems like that. Get lined up. There we go. and the intake is put on. Now, of course they want to put the valve covers on, but I'm not going to do that yet. They want to put the exhaust manifolds on, but I have kind of a dilemma. Do I use the exhaust manifolds out of the kit? If I change the engine, do I still use these exhaust manifolds to get them to line up? Or would I say use these exhaust manifolds I don't think I could use them because these ones point down in order to go out to the to the side pipes where these go out to go out for an, an exiting exhaust, right? So that won't really work. Okay. Technically, this one matches this guy here. Like that. That's what that would be for, right? Okay? This one would be like that. And as you can see, this one's going this way, this is going down still. So that's not going to work. Okay? So even if I do wind up using this engine, I'm going to have to put these exhausts on this engine. So... So I'm going to primer this engine now. Just like that. And I'm gonna throw a little coat of primer on this guy. engine is a little lighter gray now because it's primer. So I'm just going to put this right there. So we don't bump it. There we go. Okay. So as you might imagine I need to do a little bit of testing, a little bit of test fitting to see can I actually get a different engine into this car. Or maybe I could just borrow a blower assembly and put it on the kit engine, right? That might be an option also. Um, the fact that this, my my little blown engine here is a Boss 429. The kit engine is a 429. I think Ford called it the, the FE. Um, I think that's what, what one it is. Um, I actually have a, another model of one here. Uh, it's an older Ravel kit of uh, just the engine. As they, they used to make these little engine kits. Um, and this is a, a 429 FE. Uh, exact same engine, I believe. Um, this one just happens to have a blower on it. Um, so it's possible this one might be a, a good alternative. I just don't really like the air horn on this one as much. Um, but it is a possible kind of alternative. Possibly. I'll show you 
I still have the box here for that engine, for this engine. That's this. Old Ravel monogram <laughs> parts. Yeah. Comes with just, it's a Ford 427 cubic inch V8 engine. Parts for one engine, that's all it is. And, yeah. And that's, that's this. And it came with two options. You could put dual fours on it instead of a blower as well. This, that was an option. Here's the, actually one of the carburetors right here. Um, just a little single carb. Yeah. Um, anyway. That's, um, it was an option, anyway. I like the 429 though. I love my Boss engine. Boss 429 is a much cooler engine and definitely much more powerful than the 427. Um, but will it work? Will it work? I don't know. I have to kind of get the chassis and get everything put in there and all that stuff. The primer on this should be dry now. I can take this off of the sprue and we can maybe have a look before I take off. We'll get to the section here where we're going to put the engine in. So let's get this off the sprue and have a look. our little chassis and we have our 429 so let's see primer should be dry primers dry on this already so if we do a little test fit and see exactly how this is going to fit in here they don't really show us exactly where this lines up so I'm just kind of guessing just you can it doesn't actually touch anything so how do i know exactly where this engine's going to mount as you can see here's our mount but it doesn't actually it doesn't actually line up anywhere I've got a lot of play everywhere so It's almost like I need to kind of start some of this assembly here, get this rear end put in place, get the rear end put in so that I can get the drive shaft in there and then just match the engine up to the drive shaft to see exactly where it's going to sit in the chassis. Because even if I put the rad in, the rad's going to sit in here. But it, even that doesn't have its own real channel. So this is a good challenge because I have a feeling this is going to sit around here somewhere. But even then, I don't know. This piece here, is that supposed to stay or does that come out? They don't mention any removal of anything. This is our front suspension here. 
Ah, uh, yes. We're supposed to remove that center thing right there. This big section here, that's going to come out. Okay. That should make life easier. Now, where does this engine sit? So it obviously sits right in there. There's no actual notch for those things. It just sits like that. So it's going to be in this area somewhere, right? Maybe like this. See, there's two little nubs here. You would think they'd go down and locate somewhere, but they don't. We've got a little notch here. Maybe that goes inside this channel. Maybe it goes on the back side of the channel. Maybe that's where our locator is. If I put that right in the channel, then maybe that's where the engine sits. It's just like that. If I go back here, it kind of... Not quite, so I think that's probably where it's supposed to go. It's like that. Okay. So, if that's the case, that it's supposed to go like this, that's going to put this guy right about there. And he fits... just about perfectly. If I got the oil pan lined up right there, it does fit right there. So then the question becomes, let's just do a little test. there's any okay so that's going to slot in right there okay got two locator pins at the front so we've got our little holes here and here and that's where these two little pins go and at the back, we've got a slot, and that's where this slot goes. So we can locate our chassis in the body. We'll just do a little bit of a stretch and a little bit of a bend, a little bit of a flex. Get that in there. All right, so we've got our chassis in. So this guy, if we do this, it's going to go like that, and that's how he's going to sit, just like that. Okay. So let's see if we can get this, get our big boy to fit in there just the same. That's how he would sit, just like that. That's a pretty cool looking. Imagine an AC Cobra going down the road with that sticking out of the hood. That's pretty awesome. And that gives you an idea of how much it would stick out of the hood. Right? Which means that little tiny hole that's in the current hood ain't going to work at all. That gives me a good idea. I think this engine will work. I think that's pretty cool. So, 
I'm gonna go with this engine. Now, do I really want to use this oil pan? I kind of have to use the oil pan on this engine because of how it goes with the front pulley here. And it's molded like that. So this oil pan's gonna stay. It's gonna stick down lower. I hope I have the clearance when I got wheels on this car. Because it does stick down. So this engine sits on there. It does stick down pretty low low to the frame here, that, that rear sump, right? Uh, if I can get this. There we go. Okay, that's how it's going to sit, and that's how low that's going to be on the frame. Right? So... Unless I do something like I put a, a little mount and I mount it up a little bit higher, um, it might depend. When I get the transmission on there, that might change. Okay, anyway, transmission is going to come off of this guy, right? Which would have been easier having it in two pieces. But I'm basically going to junk this engine. That means this engine is going to be scrapped, okay? Or. Since the transmission's roughly the same on this car, our car, and this engine, it's not quite the same. It's not the that's not the same length. So I'm going to use the kit tranny. I just need to cut it off, which means I need a Dremel and a cutting wheel. So. I got my Dremel, and I got a cutting wheel. There we go. Okay, cutting. engine, one usable transmission. I left a little bit on there to allow me to just trim away and get it so it, it, it's going to look normal when it mounts, right? So I don't have to worry about it too much. I wanted to keep the little lip where the bell housing mounts to the engine. So now I just need to trim it all so that it looks nice.
course, getting it to mount flush is going to be the, the trick, the thing that's most important. Right now, I've got it kind of at a weird angle as it goes, it goes along, it goes, it's kind of whoosh, like this. So I've got to get it straight. And different ways you can do that. I can use the Dremel, I could use a file. I think I'm going to choose the file. It's going to be not quite as aggressive as the Dremel. You can take smaller bits off with the file. I work my way down to making it flush. Just because cutting it with a knife gets a bit tedious and a little bit hard to do when it's so thick. Trimming it with a knife is easier when you're only taking off a little half a millimeter at a time. We're getting there. We're almost straight. Not quite, though. Close now. Close. Let's do a little test fit. We are close. Just a little bit. I think, and then we're good. Of course, we have the section for the starter motor. We have a starter motor here, so that would mean this guy has to sit way over here, which would not be centered. Right? That would have to sit way over here, and that ain't right. So I'm going to have to get rid of that provision for the starter. say about the plastic that they use for this kit it's a little more brittle than you would see with something from well just about anyone else really this plastic seems a bit brittle which is well it's a little unusual in that okay That does look a little more normal. It's kind of unfortunate that the starter is way over here on this engine, which means it would take a huge bell housing, an enormous bell housing, and I don't have a big bell housing. 
So it's unrealistic in that, in that sense. But in any case, I'm going to paint this. I'm going to hit this with light gunmetal. I think light gunmetal is a good alternative to aluminum. And I happen to have some light gun metal right here. TS-42, just going to use this stuff. transmission. So we'll let this dry a little bit. And I'm going to have to use CA glue. This is a resin kit. Okay. And because it's resin, regular regular glue ain't gonna work on it. So I gotta get some CA glue ready. Get my applicator. I love Tamiya paints. Already that's dry to the touch. Okay, so I do want to kind of have an idea where this is going. Okay, so I'm basically just doing this. Applicator is not the best, it's just homemade, it's a little piece of wire rod. That's been dipped in enough CA glue that it's got a little bit of a bulb on the one end. And this is not kind of drying as I'm applying it, so I'm actually going to put a little drop, as small of a drop as I can. time to play around with it. It sets up instant. See? Doink! <laughs> when you've got a good bond, CA glue basically don't let you play around. Okay. That's that. Now I can break it off there. I'm not, if I'm not really happy with it, it does look kind of okay. Alright, let's see how she's going to fit in the chassis. Being said, this is all done, we're all matched up. We have it in the chassis, and that's how it's going to sit just like that. 
Got a little bit of a wobble because it's not, I don't have the engine on any mount at all. But that's how it's going to sit. Basically right now I've got the pulley sitting on the, on the frame. But that's how that engine's going to sit in the car. Now if I was wrong and that little nub is actually supposed to go there, then the engine's just going to sit back that much farther. It can sit back That's if that's where it's supposed to go, right? Let me change my angle so you can see. I don't know 100% if that's this little nub, this nub right here on the transmission, if that's supposed to go inside this bar or if it's supposed to go behind it. I don't know yet. I won't know until I get the rear end in and see the dry shaft because it might have to go like this and sit like that. Okay. In any case, I have that and I've got something to go on. I can take these mounts off of this engine and I can put them on the on the block of this one and I can actually have the engine mounted on its blocks. If that's where we're, we're going to go with it. But right now I think it sits pretty good. It's not bad at all. It looks pretty good to me. The engine obviously fits under this under the hood. There's not much. I just might leave the hood off of the car completely and just have everything exposed in there. We've got no hood. That is a possibility. I might just do that. Of course. You know, having the engine sticking out of the hood with the hood on is always a really cool option, but even the distributor, the distributor is threatening to interfere with the hood, but it's not quite, not quite. But definitely the fan belt sticking out and the blower sticking out, that's, that's going to be a big opening in the hood, right? So, yeah. That's going to be a big hole. Big hole in the hood. So, yeah. Anyway. That is where I'm going to leave it for today, guys. Um, yeah. A little bit of stuff. I've got to do a bunch more, bunch more body work on there. Get those lines cleaned up and fixed. Um, decide if I'm actually going to make mounts for the engine or not and uh, yeah we will see we will see and exactly what kind of hole or I'm gonna put in the hood to mount that engine um, or to cover the engine anyway um, yeah so I'm gonna leave it there for now I want to thank you guys for watching I want to thank you for coming out thank you for subscribing if you haven't done so already Hit that subscribe button below, hit that like button over there, and uh, yeah, follow me on Twitch too. Check out my Instagram where I put pictures up of all the builds I've done in the past, um, with the exception of the Valkyrie. I have not done any pictures of that yet. Um, I think that's the only thing I haven't put any pictures up of, um, just because that thing has turned out... I turned it into a robot once, and I kind of want to just leave it as a robot now. I don't really want to play around with it. It is delicate. You know, for a transforming model kit, it's delicate. And I don't really want to mess around with it too much. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And, uh, yeah, thanks again, guys, for watching, and thanks for coming out. And we'll see you all in the next one.